today on Divorce Court. I'm here today because my husband is a cheater and a pathological liar. I have cheated in my past, but that's in my past. I kicked him out of the house because of all the lying, all the cheating. I could spend the rest of my life with her if she can change, if we both can change. I see myself spending the rest of my life with Joseph if he changes, but I don't think that that's gonna happen. Divorce Court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with LaQuaya Coleman and Joseph Wyatt. The two of you have been together for 14 years, married for seven years, but you are in deep trouble, so you have come to see me. Ms. Coleman, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship and why we're here today? Okay, my husband is a cheater and a pathological liar. Okay. Um, one day, he had went to the club, and he ordered food for us after we got back from the bar. He asked me to go get the, the food, and I went and picked it up, and when I got back, he wasn't home. He left, wasn't answering the phone or text messages, and was gone for three days. <laughs> Mr. Wyatt, do you remember that incident? No, I don't. Is it out of the realm of possibility? Yes. You would never do anything like that? Not three days, right? Not three days. Well, what maybe would be the longest two. you would stay away? Uh, probably a day. A day. Ms. Coleman? That's not true. Yeah, I, 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 I understand what you're telling me. Uh, tell me something else. What else um, is going on? Oh, one day, um, again, he went out to the club and um, didn't come home for a couple days. I asked him where he was at. He told me that he was, he was chased by the police and he bypassed our house and ran to his friend's house. And so he was there for two days. Was the police chasing you? Yes. Why were they chasing you? I had a warrant. For driving without a license, they saw me. I took off driving? running. Driving? No, no. I was walking. Tried to stop me. And I took off running. Did they catch you? No. Did you get take care of the warrant? Yes, Your Honor. I took care That's of it. That's a lot of wasted time and energy, don't you think? I never understood that. I said, you know, <laughs> come to court, handle your business, and we leave you alone. Yeah, I was dumb. This is all when I was a little bit younger. Uh huh. Wasn't thinking too much. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Coleman, that never, you, you've been with this guy 14 years. So far, he ain't looking too good. <laughs> Was there any point in time at which you said, huh, this guy may not be a keeper? Yes, but, I mean, I love him. Mm. So. Tell me something else. Um, oh, okay, well, I had a miscarriage. Uh -huh. um, I had went to the hospital. That, you know, they told me that I was miscarrying, so, you know, I would have to go... They told me to go back home and just, you know, I know what to expect. Mm -hmm. um, so, this particular day, he left again, was going out drinking or whatever he was doing. Um, so, it was starting to happen, and so I called him and asked him to come home. I was home alone. And um, he told me, I'm not a doctor. I can't stop it. I'm out drinking. Basically, Deal handle it. it. Wow. Tell me something else happened. Your Honor, half of these things that she's telling you, you're just hearing half of the story. Well, you, right, that's I'm why I'm to coming you, to you to hear the other half. The last story that she just told you, I don't even recall that. I'm, I, I would do never do Do you think she it. made it up? Yeah. <laughs> she had to make it up. For one, she likes to call and... Like, if I leave, she's so jealous and insecure, she'll just make up something to get me back home. Um, for example, the house is on fire. The house on fire? I just left, like, five minutes ago. How's the house on fire? I get all the way back, she put it out. How did you put the house, a house fire out that quick? Mm. Things like that. Got so. It. It's like she plays games with me. Mm -hmm. And then on, on top of this staying out, she's saying I stay out all night, I go and do this, I do that. I don't just do it for no reason. Um, I might see something in her phone and it makes me just want to go out and drink. Like, What kind of things do you see in her phone that make you run out to have a drink? <laughs> for one, I had a friend. Uh, I had a friend. We grew up our whole life in church. Um, I went a separate way. We still was cordial, cool. But in the end, I start seeing him talking to my wife, and he's doing things for my stepson and taking him out of town. I'm wondering, you know, ain't no man just gonna be doing all this for nothing. So I start investigating. I look in the phone, I see, okay, 
Well, why would you need to sneak down to his you know, room at work? You work for a hotel, you need to sneak down to his room to see him before he leave out of town? That didn't add up with me. And then when I asked her about it, it's always, well, what did you do? You did this in the past. Okay. Was there a suspect relationship? No. <laughs> What's if he my, talking about? If my, if my, yes, I did. Uh, tell him, you know, yeah, on my break, maybe I can sneak down there and see you for a second before you go back out of town. But if my mom was staying at the hotel, I would tell her the same thing. Maybe I can sneak and see you because I'm not supposed to... Answer. Not supposed to be doing that if Ex you're at your job. Exactly. So that's what, that's what, he, that's yeah. what he's saying. But I, you know, I don't get why he couldn't have just came to the front desk and saw her. Uh -huh. It's a public place. Because right. Why I'm... can't you see anybody? You can just say hello to anybody at anywhere. That's... I mean, this is what I mean about the sneakiness. She never gets caught, but she always assumes, and once she assumes, it's true. Mm -hmm. uh, a woman's intuition. If she thinks something, it's true. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, we was in Walmart one time. Right. Just had a, a message came on my phone from Facebook. It's my cousin's wife. She just saw the picture of a female and went ballistic. I mean, everybody in Walmart heard, I mean, they looking like, we on TV. They watching her. She's cussing, cussing, yelling, dropped all the groceries, storms out of the store. She can't do nothing now because of, I didn't talk to this girl. Ms. Goldman, is that accurate? You saw a picture of a woman pop up with a message and you lost your mind? That may have very well been true, but I don't recall that. <laughs> but yeah. it does sound like something that may that, have happened. Yes, it sounds like something that may have happened. I mean, he lies so much. You know, I don't know when to believe him. Like, okay, I so Ms. Coleman, here's what I'm gonna ask you to do next. What I'm gonna ask you to do is tell me the one circumstance that you caught him cheating, or, or as close as you can to catching him red-handed. That's what I want you to tell me next. I took the phone and, you know, I asked her, like, you know, are you s sleeping with my husband? She told me yes, she was sleeping with my husband, that he gives her money, that um, he pays people, people gas money to pick her up and bring her to wherever he is, that when he doesn't come home at night, he's with her. So, Ms. Coleman, you're going to tell me the most dramatic instance of you catching him cheating. Okay, well, it was a number in the phone, and I didn't recognize it, so I called the number back. Um, I actually had my son uh, say hello when the other person picked up. And it was the girl who I thought he was, you know, cheating with. And I took the phone and, you know, I asked her, like, you know, are you s sleeping with my husband? She told me yes. She was sleeping with my husband, um, that he gives her money, that um, he pays people, people gas money to pick her up and bring her to wherever he is, um, that when he doesn't come home at night, he's with her. Um, yeah. Mr. Wyatt, your response? My response to that is, I did messed up in the past. Half of the things that that lady told her wasn't true, though. You know, she was just doing that, trying to make her probably upset. Mm -hmm. But I did mess up and admitted to that and changed from that. But since I changed from that, she's starting doing everything now. Tell me, tell me the best evidence you have that she's been cheating on you. Oh, I got evidence. Uh, for one, she has a stepson. I mean, yeah. I have a stepson, her son. She thought that who father she thought it was, it wasn't his. Um, they, ha they shouldn't have any ties. It's not your baby not father. Not your child, right. It's not his child, okay. Well, first place he comes is over our house. First thing she do is making him plates. Um, making him plates, uh, he coming over just kicking it, chilling. I see in the, um, so I started investigating. I see in her phone, she's telling the same person I've been wanting you, I don't know why Joe's still here. I've told him I want you and want to be with you. Uh, just, I mean, just, I mean, just clearly. Clearly, clear as day. Clear as day that saying. That something's going on. Ms. Yeah. Coleman, did all that occur? He did see those text messages in my phone. <laughs> but that was after he did what he did. I mean, we, this, me and this guy, we never met, we haven't messed around. My brother just recently died. He was around, you know, to make things a little easier for not just me, but for my entire family. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, nothing is going on with me and this guy. 
We're not even together right now. I got it. Yeah, I know. I, you guys are separated. I want. I want to talk about Mr. White. You say she's insecure for no reason, and I want you to tell me some of the things that she does that are problematic because she's so insecure. My sister pulls up. Get in the car. You ain't getting in no car. How are you gonna tell me I can't get in the car? Cause I got this crowbar. So she holding the crowbar, and I'm like, what? So I take off running. Tell my sister, drive Meet me off. down the block. Meet me down the block. <laughs> Ms. Coleman, did that occur? Mr. White, you not only say that she's insecure, but that she's also has a huge anger problem as a function of that insecurity. Please tell me about that. Okay, insecurity, um, for one, she helped me with my dreads. I had hair. My hair used to be so long. It was probably down past my knees, mm. um, thanks to her. She's blessed with her hands when it comes to doing hair. So when we go in our city, you know, we'll go out, go anywhere we go, it seems like somebody will say something about my hair. Mm. When they say something about my hair, it's like, you know, you look at your peripheral vision at the corner of your eye, you see, I see my wife just, it could be a man, it could be a woman. Anybody come up and say a compliment, it's, here come the jealousy. Like, as soon as we walk off, what you think you are, Lil Wayne? <laughs> you ain't nobody. Why would you say that? I didn't even do nothing. They just touched my hair. Right. <laughs> you think you something. Right. I'm like, well, well, what is all this coming from? You know that? So I cut my hair off. Tired of hearing that, I just cut it off. Now I'm trying to grow it back. That's what happened to my hair. Um, the, the, the anger. Give me the, the, the most outrageous circumstance you can recall. One day. We got an argument. I walked off. I walked to my cousin's house, called my sister, come pick me up. I gotta get away. My sister, before she come in to pick me up, she walks down there chasing me, trying to argue with me. So I'm like, please hurry up and come get me. While she walking up, my sister pull up to come pick me up. She sees her. She think I'm calling my sister to beat her up or fight her or something like that, but my sister is Just actually scared of her. So my sister pulls up, get in the car. You ain't getting in no car. How are you gonna tell me I can't get in the car? Cause I got this crowbar. So she holding the crowbar and I'm like, what? So I take off running. Tell my sister, drive Meet me off. down the block. Meet me down the block. So I'm, I'm faster than her so I take off running. She trying to run with me. She trying to run with me. I run, open the door. So my sister opened the door. I jump in, go. When I said go, she reached back, launched the crowbar, went through the back window. Oh, my sister, I'm telling her, go back, go back. Mr. Ms. Coleman, did that occur? Yeah, it had to have, yeah, because he couldn't have made that one up. What were you so mad about? He was probably out cheating. Probably. I mean, that was really long ago, like in my younger days. Since uh -huh. then, I, I mean, I'm, I'm you, not like you that stopped anymore. You stop throwing crowbars yes. at people and all that kind yes. of stuff. He also has anger problems, too. Will you give me your best example of his worst episode? Well, one day, he asked to use my car. And I told him no. So he, my car was unlocked. He went outside, reached in my car, pulled up the hood, tore all the spark plugs from under the hood. Then there was a speaker in my car. He took the speaker, lunged it at the car, put a big hole in it, then kicked it, and it has two dents in the, in the uh, door. Yeah. You were younger then? Is that is, is, no? Is that, is, no, this is was that recently. The explanation? <laughs> recently, I mean, within the last year. Yes. Did you do all that, Mr. Wyatt? Yes. And 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 you did that because we went half on a car, and I come around and the car is gone. Even if I wrecked it, you can't sell it. It's half of ours. If we went half on it, you have no right to sell something that we went half on to benefit you. So. I was upset about that. Yeah. So, just to ensure that you lost all your money that you put in the car, <laughs> you tore that up. Okay, he said we went half on a car. That wasn't the car that he dented and tore up. That was the car prior to that. You sold it. Which, yeah, I sold the car because he got in an accident and, like, totaled the car. Got so that was his half right there. So, right, yeah, so he tore up his own stuff. He tore yeah, up his yeah, own yeah, stuff. <laughs> for, for, yeah, man. Sending a message, but the message just says, I'm stupid. Yeah, that's, yeah I got it, I got it. Uh, you guys are not together now, correct? Correct. You are currently separated. Correct. And, we, and, and are divorcing. 
In the process. In the process. Let me talk to you. Sometimes when I get to this part in a proceeding, I either try to make sure you really want to go, and if you, if you don't really want to go, because a lot of times I think the woman's going to stay, she's just mad for the day, going to go home, take him back, and so on. I hope that's not the case. Sometimes I think you guys are looking for help to stay together. I hope that's not the case. Sometimes what I do is give you some knowledge that I hope that you can take with you into your next relationship. I don't even think that's going to do any good. I'm not going to get mad, but I'm going to say what I got to say. I think you guys are conducting business in a disassembled community. You're in a society where you don't have much money. Every argument ends with get out. Every confrontation ends with something getting thrown, something getting destroyed. And I can't get mad at you that because I know it is a function of part of where you're from. Having said that, I will say this. You can live down to where you're from or you can live up to a better day. And it is my hope that you would try to live up to a better day. I know that you were young when a lot of this happened, but you destroyed that car this year. Holy moly, you don't have that kind of money. I mean, you're paying the stupid tax. The stupid tax is I have an emotion. I cannot afford another car. I can tear my car up, buy another one cash tomorrow. I wouldn't do it, <laughs> but I could. You ain't got that kind of money. You just went out of car. And, and, and you're doing it because you're working on behalf of emotions with no thought behind it. I know that these days we aren't behaving very well. From Twitter, from the very top to the very bottom, everybody is arguing, everybody's ugly, everybody's calling everybody's name. Everybody, all of us adults are conducting business in a manner that my, would get my kids grounded. And everybody thinks it's okay. Not only do we all think it's okay, we, keep, we say we can go one worse. Yeah, he went this low, let me go this much lower. I mean, from the very top to the very bottom. <laughs> it's exhausting. It's ignorant. It will decimate us as a people. There will be no conversation. There will be no discernment. There will be no effort because everybody's just being ugly on the regular. And there's no example that we can follow that's better than that. I hope you can rise above the circumstances of your community. I hope you can rise the above the circumstances of social media. But rise up <laughs> at some point. And at every opportunity, you need to make a conscious decision to be better people. This matter is adjourned. Um, I am willing to work on my marriage as long as he's willing to change. He needs to grow up. He needs to get a job. He needs to stop smoking weed all the time. And he needs to take care of his son financially. Um, and then maybe I consider working on it. We're going to work it out. We're going to be better. We're going to try our hardest to get back together and do what we need to do to be with, together. <laughs> <laughs>